this morning, I would like to begin with uh, our, my message with a skit. It is uh, written by Tennis Harms. It's uh, from the skit, churchskit.com. And uh, it's about Tyler, you do know that I love you. And when I gave this skit to our skit guys, we have a drama team, right? And they say, is it already Valentine's Day? Should we talk about love only Valentine's Day during that season? No, church Christian life is all about love, God's love, all about love one another, love your God with all your hearts and minds and all your souls and strengths, right? And that is what it is. And this week's study leads us to ponder upon how can I be sure that I am loved? So let us welcome our skit guys. Please give them a big hand. So let's see what's going on with Gerald and Gertrude today. Not in a good mood. Gerald enters and goes to the other side of the table to sit down and he curtly takes a section of the newspaper which sits on the table, opening its pages and holding it high. Gerald buries his head in the newspaper so he cannot see Gertrude. Gertrude enters, stops at the side of the hidden Gerald. Gertrude cringes with anger. Gerald ducks lower as he turns the newspaper page, then continues his pretense of reading. Eventually, Gertrude stamps an angry, pouty foot, then sits down on the other side of the table, grabbing the other newspaper pages on the table and buries her head in it. Gerald and Gertrude both hold the newspapers and slant themselves so that they are hidden from each other. A few minutes. Gerald rolls his eyes with a really big gesture. Do not roll your eyes at me. They stand. Gerald puts out his hand for Gertrude to take, and they walk out together. All do I. How did you like it? Huh? That was good, yeah? So, do you think? Do you think they were sure of each other, each other's love? Hmm? So a lot of times uh, we have a hard time to communicate our love, and a lot of times uh, we have a problem with showing how much we love one another. And uh, oftentimes, I don't know about you, I wonder, am I loved by my husband, or by my friends, or my children, or, or am I loved by my people, my congregation? And how do you know that you are loved? Have you ever wondered about that? What do you use to measure, yes, I know for sure that I am loved? And this uh, Bible study from the, um, 
First Thessalonians chapter 3, I mean, we've been studying this uh, church-wide Bible study series, and uh, we are on the lesson four. Lesson four leads us to ponder upon, how can you be sure, are you sure that you are loved? So we can use all sorts of measurements, all sorts of uh, ways that we can tell, that we can be sure that I am loved. But in this hour, and you have to, you have to study this whole week about love, and uh, chapter two and three. But this, this, uh, at this point, we, I want to share with you that how you can measure that you are indeed loved by God and others. Would you like to know that? Hmm? Yes? All right. I, I've come up with, Mary, how can I be sure that I am loved? And here is two letters. Yes. You see that? All right. She didn't see that last Sunday, so she says, what did you say, peace? You've got to spell it out. So now I'm telling her. <laughs> so two S's, all right? First of all, and if uh, you want to know that you are deeply loved, indeed you are loved, if you want to make sure you are loved, then what should you do? And you should know what is love all about, right? If not, you, you cannot tell, you cannot measure that you are loved or not. And uh, here, Apostle Paul says to one another uh, in this letter, I mean, this letter is like a love letter, right? And uh, he's telling uh, Thessalonians uh, um, he loves them, and then he's got the report from Timothy, the Thessalonians, uh, loving him as well, as much as he loves them. So he was very happy and proud of them. And he says, so what? This is good news that I'm hearing from Timothy. Verse 6, he says, and your what? Faith and love. So what kind of love is he talking about? Now, you all know that the New Testament is written, by, written in Greek originally, right? And then it translated into what? Latin. And then English, right? Then so all languages has what limitations when you translate. And then in Greek, there is seven, eight degrees of uh, expressing love. But English, we have only what? One word. And you've heard about um, three major uh, Greek love in the New Testament. That is what? Agape. There another one is Eros. And another one is a philia, philo. So philia is a brotherly love. And uh, eros, you all know, I don't have to explain, right? And uh, agape is a Christ-like love. So here, almost all in New Testament, when Bible talks about love is what? Agape. So I am so pleased Apostle Paul says, you walk by faith and you agape one another. You agape me, you agape one another. That is what please, pleased him. Now, how do anyone agape one another? Hmm? When Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Do you agape me? And then Peter responds to Jesus, what? I love you, I you know, phileo you. That's what we think that is love. And uh, oftentimes we use love, then we think about Eros love. And all the songs, right? All the uh, love songs that is about Eros. Actually, it's about, not even Eros, it's about lust. Give me, give me. If you love me, you give me. If you don't give me, I'll go somewhere else. Or you love me, you let me. And the girls, when guy says so, then you say what? If you love me, you wait, right? Love is a patient. Where did you get that idea? Bible tells me so, right? Mm -hmm. 
Bible tells us what love is. What is it? Love is, a, you all know love is a patient. That's all, right? And then, hmm, I don't know. Love is kind. Love does not easily anger. Love does not hold any the wrongdoings. Don't keep the record of wrongdoings. And love does not boast. Love does not what? Envy, jealous, whatsoever. It delights in truth. And it lasts forever. Is human love last forever? No. And agape love lasts forever. Right? And that's the love our Lord Jesus commands us to do. He says, love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus laid down his life for us. Can, do you love me? Yes. Okay, would you lay down your life for me? Oh. Uh, <laughs> If you say yes, you are lying. <laughs> but this is what our God commands us to do. You know, when I went to uh, Hula Hospital, by the way, uh, Hula Halau and Diane, uh, Diane's uh, Bible study group and Diana English and all those go to Hula Hospital, they do such a good ministry. And then every time, almost every time, we sing, Jesus loves me, right? So after the, my turn to pray for them, I asked them, I said, Jesus loves you. And they go, yes, I know. And I said, how do you know? Bible tells me so, right? No? Yes. <laughs> and then I said, I love you. And then one lady says, yes, I know. And uh, how do you know? And she goes, Bible tells me so. I have to think for a second. And she is very, theolo I mean, she was, is, and a theologian. I had to think, step back, how do you know? And she goes, the Bible tells me so. Because the Bible commands us to love one another. And therefore, you must love me. Because if you are Christian, you've got to, what? Obey God's commandments. If uh, Jesus says, if you love me, you will, what? Obey my commandments. So loving one another with agape love is not optional. If you don't do it, you cannot ever please God. You cannot be pleasing God. You cannot be true Christian if you do not love one another. So we think love is like a feeling, yeah? Feelings comes and goes. One minute you love me, and then second minute you don't love me. That's not the love we're talking about, right? Because Jesus commands us to love one another. That means what? Love is not a feeling. Love is choice. Love is a choice. That, write that down. You choose to love. You choose to love. And uh, we ask cakes, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, do you, do you love your brothers and sisters? Most time they said, half the time, yes. Or most of the, half the other time they say, no, right? And then do you know you, how, you know, do you, do you think your parents love each other? And, uh, and the little boy says, yes, how do you know? They kiss all the time, yippee. Right? And then another boy says, oh, I know my grandparents love them, you know, love each other. How do you know? And they uh, hold the hands together when they walk. And then a, a, another one summed it all up. It says, I know my grandpa loves my granny, grandmother because one day she was uh, complaining about she cannot no longer paint her toenails because of her arthritis and her eyesight. And so my grandpa paint my grandma's toenail with a red color, even though he was suffering the same illness, arthritis and bad eyesight. <laughs> so you can imagine how that toenail turned out to be, right?
This, that is love. <laughs> that is love. Love choose to do for the people, for your spouses, for one another, what they need, not what they deserve. She may deserve what, whether you deserve or not. You choose to show your love. That is what our God has done, don't you think? If I receive what I deserve from my God, I won't be here, neither do you, right? And God picked me up from the filthy bottom of the pit and cleansed me up. That's what I needed, you see? That's what I never deserved from God Almighty and how he took his life for me, for you, right? We don't deserve it, but God gave us. That's agape love. And that's agape. How do you know? The Bible tells me. That's right. The Bible tells me so. How do I know God loves you and me? Bible tells me so. So if we don't study, how can we be sure that I am dearly loved by God? Huh? Right? And the Bible, John, John chapter 1 says what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with the God, and the word was God. Right? And the verse 14 says what? The word became flesh, dwelt among us. That is Jesus, right? And when Jesus, so when we study, we develop the relationship with Jesus. If you love someone, you spend the time, right? This is the presence of our Lord. If you don't spend the time with the Almighty God, with his presence, how would you know that you are loved? How would you be sure? I mean, you heard about it, God so loved the world. How do you know? How can you personalize how much God loves you? You see, that's why it is very important that we study the word of God. Amen? Amen. So what's the first S? <laughs> Pronunciation. Uh, study the word of God. That's a chance Bible study group, yeah? And good old days, they, they sit on the, um, under the tree and they study if you are not in a Bible study group, please, please create one or find one or whatsoever. Study the word of God. Amen? Amen? That's how you know you are dearly loved by your God. Amen? And the second one is this. Verse 12 is a very, um, very, very exciting words here. Verse 12 and Apostle Paul said this, let the Lord make your love, what? Increase and overflow from you so that you can love each other and all for others. Now, let the Lord make your love increase. What does that mean? Huh? This agape love can never ever be generated by us. Our Lord has to make you to increase and overflow from you. So what is our job to do? Our job is what? Let the Almighty fill us with his love. We, when can we do that? when we empty ourselves out, when we lay down our lives, when we surrender all to Jesus, that's when we are going to be filled with Christ-like love. And he's an originator, supply, supplier of agape. And that supplier fills us with his love 
and let it overflow from us. That's when we can love. That's when you can lay down your life for me. That's when I can lay down my life for you when I am filled with Christ-like love. And let the Lord increase your love. Uh-huh. You know, human love goes so far. <laughs> there is a story about an old couple. And uh, they've been married forever, right? And uh, throughout their lives, they call each other dear, honey, sweetie. And they, every night, every day, they say, I love you, I love you, I love you, same to you, right? And then old lady was uh, in the deathbed. And uh, she says to her husband, I love you so much. And when I'm gone, I want you to find another woman to love. I don't want you to suffer loneliness. So I want you. And the husband says, yes, dear, if that's what you want, I will do that, right? And the wife says, she can have all my jewelry. She can use all my china. And you know where I bought him from China when we have the trip and I treasure it. She can use that as a, her heart content. Yes, dear, if that's what you want. And then she says, oh, yes. She can use all my expensive clothes. And husband says, well, that won't work. There is a problem. You are size 10, and she is a size 14. <laughs> Human love goes so far. We, our feelings are come and goes, and our circumstances changes us. No matter how we promise each other, uh, we love each other till death do us apart. So that's why, if unless, if when we have, we have let Christ fill our hearts with his love, it's possible, right? Don't you think? When we are soaking wet with the Christ's love, and that only comes when you study the word of God, and then when we are, then we can be a supplier for God's love. Have you ever met anyone who doesn't love you when you love them? Huh? We do practically love those who what? Love. love us, right? So you can be sure that you are loved by others when you become a supplier for God's love. Don't you think? Yes. yes? And how do you do that? How do you do that? You surrender. You lay down your life. And uh, the, uh, the first John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Hello, everyone. I'm paraphrasing. Let us stop saying that we love each other. Let us show that we love one another. And a love chapter, the first Corinthians chapter 13, right? All love is about, right? And the, the, the chapter 14, verse 1, it says what? Go after life of love as if it your life depends on it. And it says, Bible says, it does. Go after. So love is action, right? And go after life of love as if your life depends on it. And then it says it does depend on it. Why? Without love, whatever you do is what? Nothing, zero, right? You can speak tongues without love. It's sounding like a what? Gong. If, if you give a lot of money, if you don't have love, you waste your money. Love that matters. And that love 
we can only provide, we can only supply, we can only share one another when we are filled with God's love. And the only way we can be filled with, we've got to let him. Let God fill us. Okay, some of you might say, thinking, God is so powerful, and can he just, just fill me? even when I don't surrender? Is it possible? Hmm? God is mighty powerful. How come he let me walk into the ditch? He couldn't just yank me out of there? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, you know, then God says, did you ask me? <laughs> did you pray? Did you? But why do we have... It sounded like we have more power than Almighty God, right? Why do we have to let God to fill us? Why do we have to surrender to him? Huh? God doesn't want us to be pushed over. God wants us to make a choice. Did you know that? Have you heard about free will? Hmm? When God created us, he gave us a free will. And the predestination? Did you hear about that? Presbyter Anybody uh, have a background or Presbyterian background? Yeah. So you probably heard about predestination. We are all, pre Presbyterians are all, we are all chosen by a predestined. Before we enter mother's womb, we are chosen to be what? God's sons and daughters. And God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. God didn't send his son only for Jewish, only for Paul Kellyans, only to whole wide world. That's a predestined. They are pre, everybody, you Buddhists, you weren't predestined to become a Buddhist, you were predestined to become a Christian. There are lots of them still out there, right? Buddhists whatsoever predestined to become sons and daughters. Then how come they are not? You are? Because you, what? Smart cookies, exercise your free will. Free will. And God says, oh, whoever accept my son, whoever accept my son, you practice your free will. And it's the same way if we, when we practice our personal will, to get closer to God, personal, we set our mind and uh, let God's love just penetrate me. And only God's love gonna penetrate each one of us is that when we let, when we submit, when we submit the power of God's love, when we submit, when we surrender all to our Lord Jesus, that's when we can become a Great suppliers for God's love. Got it? Then we know for sure because I am pouring out. My God's love is overflowing from me, so I'm pouring out God's love. Who in the world will not like me? Hmm? You know, I, I wasn't going to say this, but let me say it. And it, 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 it needs to be pondered a little deeper than that, than uh, right now, but I will say it. Jesus commands us to love one another as I have loved you. So we were dealt with it. But the first great commandment, the great commandment is what? Love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And love what? Your neighbor. neighbor what? As yourself. And suddenly it dawned on me, hey, that's equal. Yeah, as. The English is my second language. If I'm um, the wrong, then you correct me. Not now, but. <laughs> <laughs> so love your neighbor as yourself. So if when you love yourself, you can love your neighbor. Am I right? When you hate yourself, can you you will. Have you ever met uh, people who is always grouchy, always get mad at you, and you can't do nothing right, right? 98% of the time, they are what? 
mad at themselves. That's why they don't know how to love you. That's not your fault. You see, God wants you to know if is there anyone still mad at themselves, the mistakes they made in a long time ago, or something, mad at yourself. And God says, treat yourself as Christ treats you. You've got to be whole first before you can love anyone. You've got to be filled with God's love. You've got to forgive yourself. You've got to treat yourself how Christ would treat you. That's when you'll be able to treat others with Christ-like love. Got it? So what is the second S? Is that God's love you can? Hmm? When you surrender yourself, then you'll be filled with God's love so that you can, you can love yourself as God loves you and you can share that love with one another. Amen? Amen. Now, the gran granny is a very religious granny and uh, talking with um, granddaughter. And granddaughter wasn't happy with uh, uh, her brother. So she was a uh, talking to Granny, my brother, I don't know how anyone can love my brother. You know, he's so filthy, first of all, and he's not responsible. He can do nothing well. And he has a filthy mouth, and his hygiene is terrible. I don't know who in the world is going to love my brother. And then Granny looked at her and said what? Jesus loves him. Granddaughter says, are you sure? And Granny says, yes, the Bible tells me so, right? Where is it? Are you sure? And Granny thought about it for a second, and she says, of course, Jesus does know him as we do. Is that true? No, Jesus loves us even though he knows the depths of our hearts and how filthy we are. Jesus loves us. That's why, hallelujah, that's why we are chosen. We are loved by Almighty God and he sacrificed his son just to have you in his kingdom, in his family. Let it sink in your heart. When you uh, feel so loved by God and you let your God fill you with his love, then you can be suppliers of love. And then what? You can be sure that everybody else loves you. Amen? Amen. So how can I be sure about that I am loved by you or by others? How can I be sure that I am loved? To ask, what is it? Study the word of God and surrender all to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's when our God's going to Bless our socks off. Amen.